What's up podcast listeners and YouTube watchers, I'm Chase Lee and welcome back to another movie review and the movie I'm going to be reviewing right now is Yesterday, now this one comes from Universal Pictures, it is directed by Danny Boyle and it stars Himesh Patel as a young gentleman who is a great singer and he books a lot of gigs you know, around bars and like carnivals and birthday parties and stuff but he is very talented as we see him as an audience member like man I wish this guy would just catch a break right and so Lily James is also in this movie. She plays his manager. They've also been lifelong friends. And there might be a thing between them. But for the most part, they're uh, business professionals. And so there's one night where uh, Patel's character is riding his bike down the um, you know street. All the lights go off in the, uh, the whole entire world. And they kind of flicker back on. But he hits... Um, a bus and he flies and kind of hits his hits his head. He wakes up in the hospital bed and this is a world that exists without the Beatles, the musical group. And so none of their songs ever existed. And uh, uh, as the movie kind of goes along, he figures out a lot of things don't exist in this world. But for right now, this is the main premise where the Beatles never existed. So when he starts singing their songs, people are like, oh, wow, this is great original music. He's like, this is an original music. This is from the Beatles. And they're just like, who are the Beatles? And so that clicks into his head where he feels like, you know, he can write these songs and kind of deliver them to the world. And, you know, recording managers take uh, notice of it. Ed Sheeran takes notice of it and um, really kind of propel him into stardom and become the biggest thing on the planet. While also... Um, being away from like people like Lily James and uh, his best friends back in his hometown. So, you know, there's that. So going into this movie, I was expecting a lot because I love the premise to it. It's such a, a fascinating fantasy bend on um, the romantic comedy, uh, especially when I tell you about the writer. This guy's written a bunch of romantic comedies, and so he always puts like this uh, a different kind of spin on it, and I really appreciate that. But it's also directed by Danny Boyle, one of my favorite directors, period. When you talk about Train Spotting, Steve Jobs, 127 Hours, Slumdog Millionaire, um, and then what's that one with uh, McAvoy and Rosario Dar Dawson? Uh, I forgot. It's the, the Bank Heist one. That one's fantastic. Not Bank Heist, but it's like the Museum Art Heist one. That one is probably one of his more underrated ones. But once again, it just kind of proves my point. It's like he kind of goes all over the place with his movies. There's no set like genre that this man does. And I really appreciate that. He just looks at a script and goes, I want to do this. And he puts his own unique spin on it. And so when you compare that with the screenwriter of this film, who was Richard Curtis, who did uh, you know Love Actually, Four Weddings and a Funeral, Pirate Radio, and one of my favorite modern ones he's done, About Time, which is a romantic comedy with like a science fiction bend on it, he he once again takes that genre and just makes it new, makes it feel fresh, and even if it looks tiresome or if it, if it has like certain story beats, you just don't care because most of the movies that he writes are executed very well to where you're just sitting there just entertained by it, and you don't really... Uh, notice that or you don't really have a problem with it so you have all that and then you have like lily james i've never heard of himish patel so you know uh you know he's leading a movie but obviously he was cast for a reason but like i recognize like lily james and ed sheeran and stuff so it's like okay how is this gonna go because i saw the trailer and i loved it and i saw the movie and I loved it as well. It, th this is a wonderful movie. One of my favorites of the year. It's I looked online. It doesn't really have that many high. Uh, <laughs> my voice is cracked. Hi. Um, like highly rated reviews. Like some of them are like positive or like lukewarm on it. Some of them didn't even like it. Not a lot of them are like way up there with their grades. So I might be the one of the few ones out there. But I absolutely love this film. And the reason why I love it. It's just so dang likable and so so charming. The two leads in this film, uh, Patel and James, they're absolutely wonderful together. They have beautiful chemistry. Just this very playful, fun, like you can tell that they've been friends together for a long time. And even when they fight in the movie, it's like 
that also feels real and they're not even together it's like everything just flowed really well for these two characters and so the romance angle to this film i actually think worked quite a bit and there there's a large chunk of the film where they're not even on screen together but what's weird is when you're watching the movie you know in the back of your mind you're like you kind of wish he was back in his hometown with her because he had a more fulfilling life um like emotionally speaking and you know uh like spiritually and all that stuff like the the life he had back at home with her is way better than the life he's leading now like uh taking music that's not necessarily his uh and becoming this giant star out of it like you feel somewhat happy for him because he's achieving his dream but at the back of your mind you're like man this is you were happier when you did that so i thought the romance the movie it was cute it was playful really just had a nice magnetic energy to it i really uh enjoyed them two together as a uh, as an on-screen couple the actual like music um component to it and the kind of story beats of someone becoming a star that's fine um I mean, it's stuff we've seen before. Like I said, you know, he starts out small. Then he makes, you know, internet videos. Someone knows him. Ed Sheeran knows him. Then he goes on tour with him. And a record producer, manager knows him. Makes some deals. Performs in front of, you know, sold out concerts. It's not anything that's surprising. You're like, whoa, wow, that took a weird twist and turn. What I liked about it was that was executed well. But it actually had, like, the story had, like, a sprinkling of other stuff kind of going along with it. Like there was this interesting subplot with these people staring at him in the audience. You're like, what is this all about? You also have the thing in the back of your head to uh, say, how is this story going to end? Is it going to end with him waking up back into the world where the Beatles are existed? Or is it going to stay in this world? Like, how is it going to go? So there were, there was a bit of intrigue and a bit of mystery with certain characters uh, within the movie. And then of course, the uh the finish line how is this movie going to end is it going to end you know stereotypically or is it going to kind of go in a different direction so yes is the stuff with the whole music scene and like rising up stuff we've seen before sure but that didn't bother me because everything else was so uh done so well and then uh, to touch upon the whole beatles not existing thing that is a a great premise and it provides uh a really great underlying uh sense of comedy and um, I just, I love the fact that he's the only one that is aware uh, of them not existing. And then he finds out throughout the movie that other things don't exist. And it's just, it keeps going back to that joke and the whole Google thing. It's just, it's funny. It, it's, it's, it has this kind of um, sharp comedic timing to it that you think would get old, but it just, it made the movie just fresh and lively. So I thought Richard Curtis did a great job just kind of, uh, throwing something new at us while also giving something conventional and non-conventional at the same time, I thought it was a, a, a pretty great blend. And then to go on the entertaining aspect of it, Danny Boyle made this into an entertaining flick. If you watch any Danny Boyle movie, his movies are snappy. He knows how to not only direct the actors uh, and use that script to its fullest extent and really provide uh, life to the script, it's also the editing of his films that are just so well done and just make it so interesting to watch. There are transitional scenes between each scene that were uh, just really well edited and just made the movie flow so much better and provided uh, an interesting visual cue to the story that we're watching. And it's not just something, you know, kind of generic and something kind of flat. It's something that's creative and it keeps the story going and it keeps the momentum of the movie going. It doesn't ever die or ever slow down. I, I love that. It's, he, he's one of these directors that can take anything and make it seem entertaining and just super energetic and not really feel boring at all. And of course, Danny Boyle has to throw in some of his weird uh, cinematography choices, um, telling his DP, like, hey, can you tilt the camera like on a 45 degree axis? Once again, just provides some interesting kind of visual flair to it that if any other director were to take this script, they wouldn't do anything like that. I'm not saying it makes the movie better or better or worse, 
but it keeps the the visual eye entertaining um, uh, while you're watching this kind of romantic comedy because anyone could just make make a flat uh, you know overly lit romantic comedy, but Danny Boyle makes it uh, visually interesting as well. So on top of all that, it's just it's a really kind of like tight movie. It's it's a movie that doesn't feel its length. I think it's um about two hours long hour 50 maybe but it, it never felt like that one of the quickest experiences i've had in a theater and once again my voice is cracked Ugh. uh one of the fastest experiences i've had in a theater thus far everyone was singing and jamming to all the beatles songs that were coming on and um on top of all that himesh patel has a really great voice he it's not like he's uh <coughs> excuse me it's not like he's imitating Paul or John, <clears throat> I'm dying. Um, it's not like he's imitating uh, any members of the Beatles. He sings their songs and has that kind of um, that swagger, that Beatles swagger that you would hear in their songs. But he makes it his own. His voice, man, I am dying. Uh, <clears throat> rest in peace, me. Um, but yeah, he has a wonderful voice. He has a great presence on stage. He looks like a superstar and a rock star. He he inhabits this role of uh, that rock star and just he brings his own voice and his own um, musical ability to this film that was just really infectious and kind of just re <clears throat> really exciting to watch. And so, yeah, he he's a fantastic lead. <coughs> Man, it's terrible. Um... So to wrap things up, I absolutely love this film. It's such a joy to watch, even with some of the stuff that is uh, um, a bit, you know, depressing. You know, with the romance or just some of the decisions that he makes or how he gets screwed over. There's still a lightness to the movie that never feels bogged down. It just feels like this really just fun watch, really great romantic comedy. It's got Beatles songs. Mostly everyone likes the Beatles, so there you go. There's an added bonus to that. And um, it's a great watch from start to finish. I'm going to go ahead and give it an A. I think it's up there uh, as one of my favorites of the year so far. Um, absolutely love, love, love yesterday. Um, I can't wait to watch it again. So let me know down below what you thought of yesterday and what you uh, think of it. Please comment in that place. It's right below my face and let me know. And that will do it for this review, guys. I'm Chase Lee, and tune in next time for whatever I review next i'm gonna go die now i'll see you guys later <laughs>